fire what you're saying. Yes, fire key, give thanks a lot. Red are ready, no? Seriously, we are back in the studio on a special day with the bloodline here, the great Donovan Joseph here <laughs> on the yes, side. Right. And I think he'll be there Sunday. Uh, before we let the people know a reason about, I have to remind the people this Sunday uh, we'll be outside at Ito Kitchen, Ball Head in the Dread podcast party. 1032 Union Street, live podcast, live music, good food, good vibes, good conversation with a special guest, legendary, straight from JA. Fire, what reason about today? Yeah, well, today we are reason about the miserable life of fall finders and complainers, you know. When we talk about fall finding, we just want to give people the definition. A fall finder is a person who criticizes something or someone often. In, usually in an unrealistic manner or a manner that yeah, manner that is not logical logical so really want to dig into how that really impact the life of those individuals who do that and yeah. show us that there is no form of positive traits towards the type and, of behavior and fire, we have to be what's the term they use in corporate transparent we have to be it's transparent straight. so i'm a uh, recovered fault finder and complainer right yeah and um with my own personal experience, there were two parts to it. The first part is that's what I grew up around. You yeah. get what I'm saying? Like everywhere I grew up, well, the, the environment I was in, people always found fault in something fire. Regardless of what it is, there's some criticism about that thing. It just couldn't be good. Everything had to have some critique or some, some issue with it. And being in that environment, I internalized that. Thankfully, I was able to identify that and fix it moving forward. But I definitely could relate to that fault finder culture. Um, it's definitely a, a, a self-worth issue that p- falls into play, mm-hmm. right? And I don't like using the word toxic, but it is toxic at the end of the day if I, if you're meant to mm-hmm. because you don't see any good or joy in anything. Everything has to have an issue fight, mm-hmm. right? If you go somewhere, right? Somebody gives you some food, it's something wrong with the food, right? If you mm-hmm. go watch a movie, it's something wrong with the movie. If you go to a concert, it's something wrong with the concert. Mm-hmm. It's always a, a vibe. And I think that for a lot of people, it's not intentional. It's on a subconscious level and it's cultural. Because we spoke about this right on the instances where it's like, it's just always an issue, right? And with this fault finder, I don't want to I know we're going to tie into complaining, but I noticed with the fault finder is that that cortisol fire is going to get that cortisol high. And it's like you already have other things that's going to increase your stress. And I think people don't understand how their actions and their thoughts keep their stress level at such a a natural high level throughout the day, which leads to other health issues. Right. But me personally, what I had to notice is that one I had to identify that fire. I just be finding issues with stuff that's not necessarily really there. And also too, like nothing's perfect. You get what I'm saying? And another issue fire that really changed it was that the fault finding I projected onto others was the fault finding I found within myself. So when I changed how I view myself, I was able to change how I viewed the outside world. Yeah, cause it's a it's a learned behavior learned still, you know. It's fully as they say, it's like it's cultural. It's a learned behavior, so I feel like it become a norm after a time. Because after you consistently criticize something, and you criticize time, the right. next thing, then naturally the, the the next thing will come in front of you. Criticize it too. But one of the main things that Momo highlight with this whole fall finding thing is <laughs> when you really sit down and break down the concept of fall finding, you realize the so number one is ego driven by ego is a matter of okay and then the competition now is where it come in because people because we have a cultural cult, culture we span around competition it's almost like okay. anybody doing their their own thing we feel like it's a competition to what we are doing and then automatically that's our whole fall finding thing come in and then something we're more interesting with this whole fall finding thing is that our culture it's so toxic to a level where we we know right nobody <laughs> and we have to overstand. No, I, and it mess up because you, if you are the one thing and the next man do that thing, you can't compliment, you can't compliment him or you can't compliment your brother, you can't compliment your sister. You, you know, say I like that aspect of the whole thing. The only piece that you can really find is the part that you don't agree with or you don't think is right. Yeah, I like that. You stick to that and then the whole concept become negative. Or you make it up. All right. 
Because it starts to get heightened, you know, because the more, the more you start building these things, these certain things. So you see, even if there was a fault to be found, right? So there was a fault to be found. You now emphasize that fault now and start bringing more new concept, more, more concept in this now and it start distract the whole thing and then it's just a negative spiral start start off of that. And you, you brought up a great point and I know we spoke about the jealousy earlier. It kind of ties into it. But um, with the fault finding, man, as you said, I'll never forget, man. I'll never forget like when Malcolm X came out and later in life, I was able to reflect and see the magnitude of what Spike Lee did. But I remember when that movie came out and people were cussing Spike Lee for all these different things, disregarding that this man put out one of the greatest movies of all time to highlight one of our greatest heroes of all time. Mm -hmm. And it's like, none of that mattered. It's the most pointless thing. Oh, he said this. Oh, he did that. You know, and uh, it, it definitely ties into the self-hate. Um, we do have a deep, deep self-hate for ourselves and those who look like us. It's a snowball effect because it's a cultural thing, a subcultural thing, because it's not a monolith. It's not the whole culture, but it's a subculture mm -hmm. within it where it where, where really goes super hard. The, do you see these fault finders? They think everyone is doing the same to them. That's what they do 24-7. And their reality is distorted because someone may not be paying them any mind at all. Or if someone actually gives them genuine, I know for me coming out of that culture, if someone actually gave me a genuine strength or a compliment, I was kind of hesitant of it and, and kind of weary because that wasn't the norm of what I grew up around. It sounds toxic still, right? But that's just the reality. No, it no, is nobody, toxic. <coughs> it's it so toxic, yeah. Because nobody was really giving you no ratings like that. You know, anything you did is just like, you know, I remember... <laughs> I remember when I got my basketball scholarship, right? Because growing up in that environment, I wasn't able to acknowledge like certain accomplishments to later on when you reflect. But I remember somebody clearly said like, you know, division one is like the thing for you. Yeah. Like basketball. That's like the pinnacle, right? But it's like, oh, but it's mid-major. You get what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. you have like, you have your Duke, you have your mid school, you have your lower tier. And it's just like, they disregarded the fact that you actually got a scholarship coming out of this environment. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you're doing good for yourself. You're not in trouble. They disregard the whole fact because you're not going to a bigger school. But this is coming from a person that, I don't know what they're doing with themselves. That's the next joke. <laughs> that's, the, that's the next joke. And anyone out there getting that or being bombarded with fault finding, please don't internalize it because it's usually coming from a person that, I don't know what they're doing. But nonetheless, I remember this specific person that was carrying on about it. It's like analyzing like, what have you done at the most basic level of humanity? Nothing great, fine. I mean, mm -hmm. just like basic thing, like then graduate school, don't have a job, nothing's going on. And this is where the sound is coming from. Mm -hmm. And usually, truth be told, what I learned more and more, not to say it's not jealousy among successful people, but once you re reach a certain level or around a certain tier of person, uh, let's put liking and disliking to the side. There's a respect. There's a common respect because they respect the grind fire and they know that you really had to be committed to your craft to get to this point. Mm -hmm. I know we on the like thing sometimes, the dislike and this. I'm not talking about nobody liking you or I'm talking about a respect that's there amongst a certain level of people that really put in time towards stuff. So if you are in an environment that's saturated with the fault finding, you may want to find yourself in a different, maybe you, you, you've you outgrown that area. You need to be or uh, uh, surround yourself with more progressive people. Not saying that there's not no jealousy there, but there is a respect amongst that circle that's not there amongst people that really haven't accomplished stuff, you know? You, you know, a two thing, may I, may I listen to that and a two thing come to my mind, right? Oh, in the, with, the, with this concept of fault finding. One, most time the people them who actually find faults with thing. When you really ask them for break down the concept of the fault to them, find them, they can't, can't explain it, it. They can't explain it. Right. So it's just a matter of, it's just a, it's just a thing where a rose in them based off of what them say and that feeling again, of always feeling like there, there need to be some form of toxicity where them just feed off of that and, and them can't really internalize it. And then as they say, within the, within the midst of that, they are not accomplishing certain things. So. You know, from, from your standpoint now, while it might affect you, you're not really, in at the moment, you, you're not internalizing the concept that these people are not progressive at all, but you're- And not equipped to give not accurate equipped, analysis. Equipped to give, and that's what I to lead to the second right, point now, ahead. because the second point now is to show you that, one, because of that, because of that now, it'll lead towards this, this whole resentment thing now, and then this resentment now, we don't, we, because of our culture being so, so, so effed up, 
We know. No, it's a serious thing, you know. Because the culture so effed up, we don't understand that there's a difference between a fall finder and then there's a difference between a person giving you constructive criticism. True. So it almost seems like when some so when somebody come around now if you give you actual constructive criticism now. Cut them off because you're so you used cut to them off now. because you're so used to people bringing all of these negativity towards your brain. So you feel like you're this person say, you know, say this this is not the right approach. Don't do this, don't do that. You see it as fall finding, not overstanding that this is constructive criticism. So, so you realize now the negative effects and the, the, the big gap where the fall finding thing put in at the dent of the mind of the that youth, then we even where I come up now for overstand. So once you get constructive criticism, you know, this is something where you can push you forward for better yourself, enhance yourself. But because now you on the other end used to that now, it block you from receiving all of the blessing where you forget. Serious thing. And I want to touch on something. I want to elaborate on something you said in regards to um they're not equipped to give a, a accurate analysis. Uh timing, right? If a man never play football, he might tell me, tell me, <laughs> tell me how football go up all right. field. All right. So with the timing though, universal timing, along with specific things. Yeah. People who haven't done stuff back to off saying if you're around a person that done stuff, people who have not done stuff don't understand the timing aspect, right? They think things are done like ASAP. So it's like, you know, hey, um, I'm going to start a business. So I'm starting a business in January, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's lease and there's all these things that have to take place, license you have to get. So the business don't open by May now. Look at this man. I told you he fired me. I don't know what he's doing. Not knowing that there are yeah. certain processes you have no control over, mm -hmm. right? Or it takes time for the business to develop, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, the man struggling, this and that. But it's just like, it's a part of the process, bro. Yeah, Everyone, the ignorance. You're not allowed. You, you, know what I, you know what I learned too, specifically in our community, in a certain subculture, in a certain demographic? You're not allowed to struggle. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to go through hard times, right? You're not allowed to struggle at a specific thing because they equate struggling with losing. Mm-hmm. If you're struggling at something, if you're striving towards something and working towards something fire, right? And it's not all yeah. this glory and highlight, you are considered a loser in certain demographics. And that goes against the laws of nature. There's always a growth period. Hold on, if I can hear me, I, me, I, me I listen to what you say, no, yeah. it makes sense. It makes sense logically still, enough, but here we are the problem I'm finding with, with, with that door. Go ahead. In a freedom world, it, it, it's almost like it, 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 it natural. Like if you struggle, you're not, everybody who them to struggle feel to a certain extent because most of the people within freedom ecosystem and circle never, once them drop down one time, they never try back a next thing. So to, to, to most people, that, that is natural. And to them, like while, like while to the general concept of nature and all of these True. things and life itself, it, 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 it not natural. But in a for them surrounding, my mind of it, like, but I wouldn't, that could be clear, you know. A yeah. lot of people grow up around, 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 around losers who, who losers who I complain. Lose are too tough, right? Let's say, no, I say lose, no, I talk it like it Let's is. Let's say idol. Let's say idol. No, I talk fire. about loser, loser in tough. regards to, cause you know, <laughs> my mind, you know, if you complain every day, if you negative every single day, if you, you don't have no form of spark of brightness and, and things we can yeah. bring you forward. You're a loser. And it, no matter what, it might sound harsh, but it's just a reality because if your mind is conditioned towards negativity and consumed, and, and then there's nothing else where no, no form of light to shine within your circle. And then uh, mind you, a lot of these adults who portray a certain behavior, they are conscious of this behavior. Yeah. And a majority of them are conscious to a certain extent that is. So you, you, have, you have to call it what it is. And it's not like we are trying to just don't put down nobody, but it's just a reality of the environment where it's spawn. And then the ego will come behind it now. It's almost like you have to, you have to call it what it is. I want to touch on two things. One, uh, I want to jump back in regards to the uh, the culture. I can't say a lot of people are striving because like there's no striving there. Right? They're just there. I can't even say they're existing. They're there because a lot of times it's not even something where they try something and Respect to those who even try. Because mm -hmm. growing up where I grew up, fire is just like people weren't working like that. And people like, I never heard anyone speak about a goal. I never heard, I never really saw anyone work towards something. And those who had the courage to do so were just criticized, fire. Mm -hmm. Like, really, like, just all eyes on them and they would tear them down. And I think viewing that too discourages people from stepping out because they see how your peer group or how your environment treats you when you try to do something. Mm -hmm. that's not the norm you know um uh what's the second part fire i lost it what's what you just say prior to this 
Um, uh, you're talking about the adults. I you remember, I remember, remember to in a fire. You see, I, I, I want even this concept of being a loser too. I really want it tie into the reasoning still because I really want to expound upon this. You know. Is there any, there's only two places you can be, you know. And being a loser you know, means uh, it's a, there's a negative connotation to it in from one aspect. But being a loser means you're just not winning. At the moment. At the moment. And it's how you transition from, from being, being, being a person who is in a losing position. Yeah. To, to transition into that person who barely scraping and then you continuously assure the evolution. But I feel like when once your minds are stuck in a negativity and then it consistently does a plague you, you have to be super strong for come out of that, you know. No, or I mean, else listen, get trapped. Anyone who came out of those environments are super strong. You have to get them crazy. It's, it's not to get out of some of these places fire along. We're not even talking about this, the, the 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 political aspect fire. We're talking about mental the, the mental aspect yeah. and the social and the cultural aspect within that environment. Fire, we can't leave out the complaining too. Can't yeah, leave out the complaining. Fire. <laughs> we can't we can't leave out the complaining, right? And I highly recommend that I have an extremely small circle. And the reason I do it is that I, I've learned over life is that you really have to protect yourself and you have to protect your energy and protect your mind. Some people come with a bag of things, fire that's non-progressive and it just burn you out and I don't have time for it, right? The fault finding, I don't have time for it. And the the, the complaining. Now, complaining is a tricky thing in a sense because complaining has a positive aspect to it. Sometimes it's good to complain in a healthy way, to kind of vent. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I know we're using the word complaining it has a negative connotation, but there are different aspects of complaining, right? The negative aspect of complaining now comes to where <clears throat> you just have this negative view of Hold everything. on, FIA. Go ahead, go ahead. Explain the one that's me again. Oh, I mean, no positive part of I mean, I mean, no no. positivity in a complaint. I, I think you know? with complaining, they have a thing they, they say like venting or getting stuff off of your chest, right? Yeah. One can one one would categorize. No, it's an like expression. Complaining. I'm not yeah, complaining. Yeah. More, what I'm more expressing yourself. But it, no, that was still like by the definition of complaining, though, yeah. that would be still considered complaining. Yeah. Yeah, but it's done in a, a, a like this is just a time like fire, car, fire, so boom, something going on, right? It's a complaint. But it's a healthy thing more to get something off my chest yeah. or to ask you for some information about it. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm not like losing myself, just complaining, looking bad at the world, you know? Yeah, the context that we yeah. are reason, reason, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. address. Okay. So with the complaining time. now, um, <sighs> complaining now, what I noticed too is that it's like a bonding for a lot of people, right? It's the common thing. So it's just <laughs> like, all right, sometimes I'm not saying like, listen, I got problems like everybody else, but my life is dope and my life is sweet. It's maybe it's my perspective. I got a bunch of stuff maybe that uh, shut down other people. They'll experience and figure it's the end of the world. I don't see it like that because everything's perspective, fight. I know things that like nothing's absolute, right? I'll experience that for a time. But I'm able to like contextualize things and see the beauty in life at all times. You know, yeah, yeah. you have your little vibes. But what I notice is that, man, with the complaining is that it's so bad out here, right? You can't even go tell a man, say, yo, how you doing? Oh, you know, ah, oh, such and such. You can't tell him, say, yo, you're making a move or you're doing this or you're working towards something. Even if things are going, you're struggling with something right now. Yeah. But I'm still working towards something, fire. It's just a rough patch. You can't have that conversation with the average person because once they see you, it's, oh, the, the weather's bad today. It's the end of, oh, end of you know? the all. Because, because really and truly, you know, it's, it's almost like it, it take over it take over the being and the existence of most of the people and where, where they have to complain about things. And I feel like that the whole bonding thing that we're there about is not something for overlooking. You know? Bonding over complaints is, is, is the new norm, you know. We're, we're friends. Most people become friends for the concept of complaining and talking about, about, about different things where I hurt, where things where I hurt them or things where them not agree with or things where make them uncomfortable. But you know the, you know the weirder part about the whole, fire, the whole hold thing. On, hold on. You got to yeah. add something to this fire yeah. for you yeah. to continue. They complaining about stuff that has nothing to do with them fire. I wouldn't know the con- like I would know the control over to. You get what I'm saying? That's the part. It's just like they're really consuming themselves over something that has not they have yeah. it has nothing to do with them it's not even impacted them to a certain level i just wanted to add nah, that nah, part them no but that's them the scary them part. make it impact them because sure. my mind is almost like the people them can like if me if put me i put myself in the shoes as a complainer now me is me talk about that thing it affect me every single day me no feel good if me get up and something don't affect me. So you say, you say, you say, how oh, we become and make this thing become a part of our life, our daily existence. Because my mind, if the sun at, if the sun at, people, people complain, say too hot. It get cold, them complain, say too cold. It's just almost like there's always a step. 
And regard with every part of the ecosystem, somebody have to talk about this thing when make them uncomfortable. But then it's not just about them being uncomfortable. Yeah, if that was the case, that it's not bad and not so bad. But you know, the worst part about it for you, even the things that are controllable within the complaint, these people are not taking action to fix it. All right. So you have that lack of action, which makes it pointless to complain, right? Because there's no solution aspect. But there's another thing, Farah, I think we need to acknowledge is that could it be that people are addicted and comfortable with stress? Could it be if they don't feel stressed out, they feel weird because they it's like a it's like their comfort zone is stress. Their yeah, comfort zone them is adrenaline. problems. Right? Yeah. So if, if there's nothing that's fire, listen, I taught students that told me straight up there was a thing called um uh, it's a program. Basically, the kids could write the answers so you could read them, but no one else could see them. And they were like being very truthful, right? Hey, a lot of the kids straight up said they call they have to cause problems, fire. They need confusion they need conflict they can't mm -hmm. just sit and everything be cool mm -hmm. it likes it it scares them. it boring it's boring yeah right you see it in relationships you see it in self-sabotage on people in the sense that like man you know my life about to get a little good you know i think things gonna calm down and i f it up on purpose they remember now yeah you see that's why i'm even telling them them about the music you know basically all them want to talk you know me can't talk with the camera they already so it's yes, all our own so-called influencer and musician where lead the people them astray on our garbage because I see this whole trendy thing now of being toxic. I'm a see hashtag toxic and all of these things. I mean I say I'm and then we really check it out. You know what the most hurtful part about this whole thing for you? This toxic behavior, it it a carry out by all some female way, physically attractive and all of these different things now and these people where, where you wouldn't even expect and then all of these artists is now push this narrative of being toxic remember you know toxicity is that thing where it connected to even complaining and it complaints and it connected to things where now have nothing to do with, with your life being in a good direction and it become a trend so you see the whole concept of complaining fire is that thing where people push the narrative of complain just because there will be a gap to fill and then there's somebody now who come and benefit from that complaint now to start it in a new different new direction. And and with the trend thing, I think um I think it's always been trending. It's just uh transferred to social media now because I grew up around it, man. Yeah. I was born in the eighties. And it's been going on before me because people wrote about it or an elder tell me about it. So it's nothing new, you know? And it's like I, I, I will say this with the complaint if I and the fault finding and everything, uh, is that there is a certain level of comfort in that culture for people because that's all they know. And it sounds a way, but like people are terrified of things going good because mm -hmm. it fluctuates. The, the What you would consider going good has a certain time span and people like absolutes. So it's like, if this is not going to happen for the rest of my time and I have to deal yeah. with fluctuations, I'd rather do something I could control, which is this, where like, you know, if I don't have a problem, I'm going to find a problem or create a problem. So you have those who need to create actual conflict with others that actually create yeah, get problems drive, with yeah. other people, like create issues with family members and friends and mix it's up exciting. on the job, right? Then you have others yeah. now that have to analyze life and take that and complain about, about that and almost internalize yeah. or, or take on, as my Jamaican bridge would say, <laughs> take on the issue when one it has nothing to do with them they don't have an impact on it it doesn't have an impact on them but they internalize it so it's like they're creating this reality of confusion to just stay in their comfort zone and i think that anyone younger if you find yourself in that situation fight there's a lot of work you have to do to where you can like find peace in peace mm -hmm. it's okay for things to be quiet it's okay for things to not be in conflict it's okay for things to run smoothly and it's okay when they don't run smoothly because you're going to have periods where things are really iry according to you and where things are a little frustrating according to you. And that is the biggest, I think that is the biggest key here but, because we have to understand in life we can't always control the narrative facts. and not because we can't control the narrative or the narrative is not playing into our favor. It mean, it doesn't mean you're bad luck. It doesn't mean that 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 you're cursed. It don't mean all of these different just things. Just life, fire. Just life. You understand? Yeah. So we, yeah. we encourage anyone listening, man, if you're on the fault finding vibe or you find yourself in that fault finding vibe or that complaining vibe, you need to change your circle. And if that's you, you need to go look inside to see like, why are you so consumed with finding fault and everything? Let's lighten up yourself, man, because we need to be thing, some you know? angels being both here and bring some joy towards the world. No, serious thing, you know? And we have to remind the people, 
August 25th, this Sunday, right? We'll be outside, a ball head in the dread podcast party, live music, live podcast, good food, good vibes, good conversation at the Aito Kitchen, 1032 Union Street, Brooklyn, New York, from 6 p.m. until, really till 9 p.m. still. You know how the vibes go, but if the vibes there, we just keep making it work, you know? Yes, sir. Thank you.